Hey everybody. Today we're talking a little bit about the chi-square distribution, which you will absolutely run into in your study of statistical inference as you make your way down that data science pathway. It comes up in this situation. You have a bunch of independent numerical observations, and you'd like to somehow measure how far they are, sort of overall, from their expected values. A little bit more formally, what you do is you take each of your random observations and compute a z-score, so you subtract the expected value divided by the standard deviation, square each of those z-scores and add them all up. And that sum is going to be the random variable chi-squared, which is, again, going to measure how far your observations are sort of in total from the expected value. For instance, if all of those observations were exactly at the expected value, then the chi-squared statistic would be zero. And if the results were further away, more extreme, then that chi-squared value would get bigger and bigger. The idea behind squaring all of these z-scores is to ensure that the low results that you've gotten don't um, somehow cancel out or balance out with the high results. Remember, a z-score is supposed to measure how far an individual observation is from an expected value, either in the positive or negative direction. The sampling distribution of this random variable chi-squared is called the chi-squared distribution with r degrees of freedom. So here is r, the number of z-scores that are going in, the number of those independent observations. By the way, notice the name of the random variable is the same as the name of the distribution. The context usually makes the difference clear. It's occasionally something you have to watch out for a little bit. Since each of the z-scores is a continuous random variable, so is the sum of the squares of them. We can describe it with a probability density function. And in the case of chi-squared, the probability density function is only going to be positive for chi-squared values that are at least 0. The distribution is going to be skewed to the right um, because very, very extreme values for the in each of the standard normal distributions for those z-scores are going to be in, um, decreasingly likely. The graph of chi-squared of 5 is typical. It's got this strong rightward skew. You can see that its support, the set of possible outcomes, is strictly positive. A couple of important facts. This first one in particular is, uh, I think, worth bearing in mind. The expected value of the chi-squared distribution with r degrees of freedom is just r. And this makes sense if, if you think about that definition. Chi-squared is the sum of all the squares of the individual z-scores. Remember, the standard deviation of any z-score is, um, is going to be 1 here. In a sense, that's measuring sort of the average amount by which one of these observations will differ from the expected value. So if you have r observations, the expected difference is going to be exactly r. Another important, though slightly less often used fact, is that the peak of the chi-square distribution with r degrees of freedom is at r minus 2, as long as r is at least 2. If it's less than that, it's going to be zero. By the central limit theorem, when the number of degrees of freedom gets large, the distribution chi-squared of r is going to become approximately normal. And you can see this um, in this sketch, which shows r equals 50. If you squint at it a little bit, you will see still a bit of that rightward skew, which makes sense. The chi-square distribution comes up all the time in inferential statistics, as you would guess from that very first slide that I started off with. Here's a couple of the most common uses. Significance testing for variance um, under the assumption that the distribution you're sampling from um, is normal. When drawing samples of size n from a normal distribution with hypothesized variance sigma squared, the sampling distribution of n minus 1 times s squared, that's the sample variance, divided by sigma squared, the hypothesized population variance, um, is chi squared of n minus 1. Goodness of fit testing, when you have a categorical variable that's hypothesized to have a certain distribution, the sampling distribution of O minus E squared over E is approximately chi squared of N minus 1, where N is the number of categories. So here is the observed count in each category, and E is the expected count under the hypothesized distribution. I have a video on this. I'll throw that up top. I have a video on all on each one of these things, but that's the one I'll throw the link to. Um, two up top. Also chi-squared test for independence, um, and that's a very similar sort of test as goodness of fit testing. As with any continuous random variable, you can compute probabilities in a chi-squared distribution 
distribution using a cumulative distribution function, or CDF. So for any given value, x, the cumulative distribution function, big F of x, gives the probability of randomly getting a value less than or equal to x in the specified chi-squared distribution. Here's the technical definition. I think a picture is a little bit more clear in terms of understanding that, though. If you want to get capital F of 8 in the chi-square distribution with 5 degrees of freedom, it's the probability of randomly getting a value less than or equal to 8 in that distribution. It's that shaded area right there. Um, computations in R are done with the P chi-squared command. And in order to do that sort of computation, you have to specify the value of interest. For instance, in that previous slide, the value of interest was 8. And you have to specify the number of degrees of freedom, R. So, for instance, to do that computation from that previous slide, you'd be using the command p chi squared of 8, comma 5. And in this case, you get about 0.843. I have a whole video on chi squared computations in R. I'll throw a link to that one up top as well.